This week, we're back home in Pennsylvania for some mid-October whitetail, muzzleloader, and archery hunting. Bucks are on their feet and opportunities to fill the freezer present themselves with the chance to extend our range beyond that of a bow and arrow. Plus, an old PA warrior shows up once again in broad daylight. So sit back and relax as we look to fill our first tags of the 2022 season in our home state of Pennsylvania. As is Pennsylvania early muzzleloader season tradition at this point, the first year we'd see on this hunt would be young bucks. The deer we were hoping to see may not have stepped out tonight, but we chose this stand for good reason. While I was filling my first ever out-of-state buck tag in West Virginia, Isaac took the opportunity to hunt this stand. Setting out to fill a doe tag that evening, he never could have dreamed of what he'd encounter. It's Friday, October 14th. I'm set up in DJ's stand back here where he's killed a few deer from in the past. He's killing big bucks in West Virginia, so I figured I might as well at least take advantage of his stand while he's gone. I know there's still deer coming out back here. Whether or not they'll do what I need them to do tonight is, uh, that remains to be seen, but I'm pretty confident. It got a little bit warmer than it was supposed to today. Um, it's about 57, 58 degrees right now. A little bit breezy. The wind is perfect, it's blowing right in my face. Going back behind me here, there could be deer bedded back in there, but I don't really think so. Where they typically come from is more to my right or even out in front of me, so I think the wind should be perfect. It's already 5.30, so we're down to about an hour and a half, so I better keep my mouth shut, get my face mask on, and uh, we'll sit back and see what happens. Out of nowhere appears the Bladed Nine, a seven and a half year old PA warrior. With plenty of light left and just a hundred yards away, he set it in the perfect direction for a shot. The buck covers 40 yards in no time and begins making his way into Isaac's shooting lane. Isaac takes his chance to get the camera into position while still hidden by the branches.
With the camera fixed on the shooting lane, all that's left is to wait for the old buck to work his way through. But he stops and begins feeding in place. With more than 30 minutes of light to go, it's now a waiting game. He's 53 yards away, and he slows down yet again. It's not a shot Isaac is willing to take in any circumstance, let alone at a buck that has been atop both our list of shooters for four years now. He needs the buck to close the distance just a bit farther. He never comes closer than 53 yards. This buck, like many of his age class, seemed to have a sixth sense that keeps him just barely out of harm's way. As deflating as it is to watch him walk away, I know the feeling. He's gotten the best of me more than a few times by now. But to film a seven and a half year old PA buck in broad daylight at that range is something to be proud of in and of itself. Encounters like this are what we live for. Sometimes it all goes to plan, but most times it doesn't. There's plenty of season to go, more than a month in fact, and the Bladed Nine has just shown up earlier than he ever has before. Maybe this is the year he finally slips up. Man, that was an exciting hunt. I gotta keep it down because there's still deer like 50 yards from me. That was the first time I have ever seen the Bladed Nine. And I will tell you for sure, he will get your heart pumping. Holy man. He was coming on a beeline towards me there at the beginning. I thought for sure I was going to have a shot at him, but he stayed out there. He never got closer than 53 yards. That is why I love whitetail deer hunting right there. Unfortunately, the last couple of years I haven't had a whole lot of experiences like that, but man, in that moment, there's just nothing going on except you and that buck. The story of the Bladed Nine lives on. I'm just happy that I can contribute to it. With Isaac's encounter adding yet another chapter to the novel that is the story of the Bladed Nine, every move I made was to try to get into position to finally write the closing sentence to the story of a buck that always seems to be one step ahead. Well, it's Friday, October 21st, and I'm set up in the first stand I ever bow hunted out of. Dad built this stand about 10, 11 years ago, and it's been a spot where I've had a lot of success, mostly with a muzzleloader, and with only this evening and tomorrow left to go. I really wanted to at least try to get a doe tag filled with this opportunity to kind of extend our range beyond 
what's possible with a bow and arrow. With this limited time frame, Kyle and I decided to split up. She's hunting about 75 yards up the edge of the field from me, and I've got her set up with a GoPro, so we'll see what happens tonight. It's probably the nicest, calmest day in two weeks, so hopefully that'll be enough to get the deer on their feet. They've been in this area, even despite the wind that's been darn near nonstop for the last four or five days, so hopefully a little calmer. If I'll move earlier, maybe we can get at least a tag filled, if not two. I watched these deer for about five minutes and just could not convince myself that the doe was mature as she and the young buck stood side by side at around 110 yards. Upon returning home and seeing the footage on a larger screen, I can say with confidence that I should have taken a shot at this one. I kind of think I messed up. I don't know if that's a adult doe or just a really like late born fawn last year, early born fawn this year. It just had like a really short looking face. I was looking camera through my scope but then the buck went over and stood by it I don't know the buck that particular buck has been traveling with some fawns so that is is that the plate at nine there's a huge buck right there Once again, showing his unbelievable sixth sense, he appears again at last light. I don't have my bow to legally take him, but he was well beyond my effective range, especially in these lighting conditions. But remember, Kylo was hunting as well. He came out almost exactly between us, behind the same branches that Isaac filmed him through exactly one week prior, which prevented Kylo from even knowing he stepped out in such low light. The chess match goes on. On the last day of the season, Isaac decides to switch it up. I'm back out for the evening on absolute last chance with the inline muzzle loader this year. It's about 30 degrees warmer than it was when I was out this morning. It's almost 70 degrees, but the temperature is dropping a little bit. It's supposed to be down to 60 or maybe a little bit lower by dark. The deer have been coming out in this spot religiously and I just can't get a shot. So I figured while I got some more distance with the inline, I'm just gonna give it one more chance here. And hopefully I'm not messing this spot up for the rest of archery season, but really hope I can get a deer on the ground this evening. Gotta get that first toad that filled so we can get some momentum going and hopefully going into the latter part of archery season, we can start bunching some tags. Before long, a mature doe makes her way into the field, presenting a shot opportunity. Bat. 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 over an hour until dark. 
I have no idea. I didn't even have time to turn on my action cam. I just looked up one time and there they were. And as fast as they've been getting up onto that skyline, I didn't want to wait. So I just got my main camera on, got up. Uh, I got her head up so that it was a better shot angle and everything. But I'm telling you, it looked like she wasn't hit. So I'm kind of shocked, but I'll check that camera footage and see what it looks like. Isaac decides that it'll be best to give the doe time, but also to continue hunting. I think I'm gonna go ahead and start slowly backing up so I can get over there and take a peek in the field while it's still light out, see if I can find any blood or anything, get a better idea of what the shot was like. Just as he completed packing up, a mature doe appeared at the edge of the field. With his camera arm in his bag, his only choice is to rest the camera on the seat of the other tree stand in the double set and try to get the doe in frame. Not finding much, we decide to mark the location and track the second one first. Look at all the right there. Oh, right here. On that tree. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She cut right there, I guess. It's no wonder why they come up out of here. Yeah, no kidding. This is one of those times, though, you wouldn't be too upset if it was a small deer because we got a heck of a drag out of here. <laughs> She's real did, big, though. Did What's you it? say we or you? Oh, yeah.
Well, it took until the last day of early muzzleloader season, but finally got a shot off on a nice big doe, and uh, that 50 caliber bull found its mark. Looked like I probably got right in the center of the vitals here. Unfortunately, she made it pretty far down into this real thick stuff, so the drag out's gonna be interesting, but that's okay. I'm just happy to have one of my tags filled. We do have one more deer to track because I was able to get two shots off tonight. Not as confident on the other one, but I'm just thrilled to have one tag punched. So we're gonna get her gutted out and start dragging her up. Well, we got her all gutted out and drug up that nasty hill and up to the quad. So we're gonna get her hung up to skin out and then we're gonna start tracking the other one. After an hour spent tracking, we had made it 30 yards and lost blood entirely. Well, we got on some blood trailed her for a while but she just wasn't losing much blood and we couldn't stay on the trail at least we got one tonight so we're gonna head back and finish skinning her and uh, we'll continue on for the remainder of archery season it's always tough to lose a deer especially when you feel sure of your shot reviewing the footage in the following days we believe the shot to have been low and can only hope that the doe survives it was a wild eight days. The Blade and I daylighted twice in the middle of October. Isaac managed to punch the first PA tag between us. And now we move into the end of October, which will bring buck activity and the opportunities that we as bow hunters long for year round. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.